Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week I'm going to be having a look at a couple of science units and in particular the unit planning process when it comes to building science units. So if you're interested in this topic then please keep on watching. Okay, so this week I'm going to be showing you a couple of units that I've created, uh, adapted from the work of Lynn Erickson and Lois Lanning. And I'm just gonna make myself a little bit smaller here. So let me move myself to the corner here. I think I'm gonna be out of the way. Let me just make myself a little bit smaller. Okay, so you can see from the unit title, this is about organisms living in the biosphere. And what I always encourage teachers to do is to generate from the content, from their standards, lots of individual concepts on little post-it notes. So you'll see that these concepts here in the light gray box were generated first from looking at the standards and the content that you want to cover in this six to eight week unit. And then once these are all generated on individual post-it notes, we start moving the post-it notes into strands, into categories or themes. So once we generated the concepts for this, uh, we ended up with the strands on interdependence within ecosystems. We had another strand to do with characteristics of an ecosystem. We had energy and resource transfer within uh, ecosystems, and we had challenges to ecosystems. So this, um, the idea of the content here was adapted from transitioning to concept-based curriculum and instruction on page 150. What I've done is I've just transferred this into a web, and then I've added some of these generalizations that I've tried to craft based on the concepts that have been listed. So, for example, when we look at interdependence within ecosystems, I said that students understand that ecological interactions and complex networks within ecosystems reflect an interdependence in various ways such as symbiosis, mutualism, communalism, parasite or competition. And so that is the understanding that you want students to be able to have and to take away from their learning experiences. So you look at this statement, you design learning experiences to help your students arrive at these conceptual understandings. Now, I wrote a few more. Um, I wrote this one, uh, Challenges to Ecosystems, and I thought I could really see what learning looks like by reading this particular statement. Students understand that challenges to the ecosystem System arise from industrialization and urbanization, and this results in environmental concerns such as pollution, increased ecological footprint, and climatic changes. And so here you can see the series of learning experiences that you would design for students to actually arrive at that conceptual understanding. And here you might notice that I've chosen the conceptual lens of interactions so that we can look at all the different interactions within the organisms um, in a biosphere. So that was a high school example. Now let's have a look at a grade five, six example. This is also adapted from Dr. Lynn Erickson and Dr. Lois Lanning's work. So and I've just crafted some generalizations to go with this web. So originally we generated these concepts, particles, solids, liquids, gases, intermolecular space, size, mass, volume. And then we reorganize them and categorize them into these strands. So there was classification of physical properties, particle theory, change of state, and transfer of energy. And then some of the conceptual understandings that you want your students to arrive at from your learning experiences could be solids, liquids, and gases provide a broad means of classifying the state of matter used by scientists. Or we may have a look at a conceptual understanding based on particle theory. Particle theory explains properties and behaviors of materials by providing a visual model to show what is happening on a very small scale inside those materials. So the particle theory model can be applied to many, but not all phenomena. So you can imagine that you'd be designing learning to help students arrive at that understanding of that visual model. 
And then I have one on transparent energy, different methods of heat transfer on a system may be described in terms of molecular movement, collisions and temperature. And you can imagine the series of learning experiences that would actually lead to that understanding. So at the moment, I'm helping schools in my partnerships with developing units that are concept based that focus on deep conceptual understanding. And we always start off with this overview, this web. And one thing that I really want to emphasize is that this unit web should be co created. That means in a collaborative environment where you're bouncing ideas with one colleague or a few colleagues, which is ideal. And that means that you can actually share resources as well. So I hope that you found these unit webs useful. I'll put a link in the comment section below to these uh, templates and these examples. And if you have any questions at all, please feel free to put a comment in the section below. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.